Hey guys, real quick before we jump into the vlog, I want to go over just a couple of things. Now normally, me and Jessica would be doing this, and as you'll find out in the vlog, Jessica's not going to be here right now because I'm making her stay in bed and get all the way better from whatever stomach bug she has. I am going to go over a couple of things that we usually do at the beginning of the month. Uh, there's two things going on right now. Uh, one is our January stickers have been released on our shop, so I'm just going to go over those real quick. Uh, Jessica honestly loves these. I'm not that big of a sticker person, but I do think that the artists are fantastic. This is a book with a cup of three books, the cup of coffee, and it obviously says tomatoes, which I don't care about. Uh, gardening, I like that pretty good. And in season, which means that's probably a cookbook, so I like that a lot. You know how much I like to eat good food. Set of root vegetables uh, for a picnic or something like that. I mean, it's you know got a little checkered blanket. It says pickled with love. There's a coffee pot. It says rise and shine on the mug. Very Jessica. Almost every artist that we've commissioned and promoted has done a sunflower of some kind. Which we didn't tell Erin, who's the artist for the month, uh, to do a sunflower, but she did. And I thought it turned out pretty neat and cool. And then the last one, which is Jessica's favorite, is... Jessica holding colorful eggs. So the artist this month is Erin uh, Lowe. Um, I'll have her Instagram and her website linked in the description of the video. She's actually the same artist who did our Real Food Comes Dirty shirt and the classroom shirt and the new Roots and Refuge logo with the sunflower. After seeing the dynamic work that she's done on our shirts, we asked if she'd be and willing and interested in doing some sticker designs for us and she was super excited to participate. I thought she nailed her interpretation of Roots and Refuge. The last thing I want to talk about is our t-shirts. They are available right now. They're on uh, Be Unlimited. I'll have the site uh, linked in the description. And we just kind of changed some things up. So if you haven't checked out the new pre-orders for our hoodies and long sleeve shirts and t-shirts, go check that out. There might be something there that you you'd like. So the pre-orders close and then they start shipping, uh, printing and shipping them uh, on the 18th at midnight. If you guys are, are running a shirt with the classroom design, the sunflower logo, or a Real Food Comes Dirty hoodie or long sleeve, uh, get your orders in now. When this uh, order closes, those shirts uh, will not be available again. Um, I don't know when or if we'll bring them back. But this is the last run for, for those that set of designs. And then, you know, we'll probably have some more designs in February. Now let's jump into the vlog. Hey guys, welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. Uh, I'm Maya, and it'll just be me today and uh, one of my crazy kids, Benjamin, because he uh, has some things he wants to show you guys. Things have been just a little off around here uh, since really right after Christmas. Uh, ever since the septic thing happened, either Jessica's been sick or I've been sick. Uh, I actually kind of uh, came down with something. I thought it was either because I had to spend about four and a half hours on the tractor, uh, which you can see behind me, that's where the septic was dug up. Um, but anyways, the day that I had to dig that up, it was about four and a half hours in almost uh, sleet. I mean, it was just above freezing and it was raining. Um, and after that, I just kind of felt cruddy, felt like, you know, I had some congestion and just normal like winter uh, sickness, but nothing too serious. And it just took me a few days to kind of get over it. And just about the time that I was getting over it, Hi. hey Toby, uh, Jessica came down with something and that was kind of like, I don't know, middle of the week last week, she just started not feeling super great. Um, she tried to push through it as she usually does because she likes to do what she wants to do um, and she was uh, excited to get past the holidays and get into all the big plans she has for this year's gardening and the just the projects she's working on but honestly she's had to stay in bed we have not been able to produce a ton of videos because of that so I told her I said I'll grab the camera and I'll go out and I've got some things that I can talk about that I'm sure you guys would be interested to know about <laughs> at least i hope so we're just going to hang out for a little bit and now it looks like it looks like i've got two of my kids out here so i've got toby and ben with me and uh honestly they always seem to add uh fun to any video so i'm sure it'll be interesting one of the things that we set to uh repair and to work on is the garden fence around the main garden uh, one of the issues we've ran into was that it was the 
welded wire fence because that's what we could afford when we built the fence. And uh, I've talked about this before on videos, but I'll go ahead and just go over it real quick again. There's uh, two kinds of uh, farm. Oh, Ezra's come out to hang out Hi. too. Looking jazzy with that uh, nice vest, flash shirt. Super cool. So the two kinds you can get are the welded wire fence and what they call woven wire fence. What's up, big guy? And he's got such short fur. It's he does not like the cold, which is why he's outside right now, because it's actually not super cold right now. But it was cold this morning. He was like, oh, I don't want to go to the bathroom. But anyways, uh, there's two kinds of fence. There's welded wire and woven wire. Um, welded wire is cheaper, but it won't last. And one of the biggest uh, things we run into with welded wire fence is that animals like goats who like to rub up on fences and use it to scratch their bodies will actually break welded wire fence down. Um, it doesn't last real long, uh, which is why it's cheaper. And so we've uh, spent the last couple of years, just uh, as we could, replacing all of our welded wire fence with woven wire fence. And the last section of fence that needed to be replaced um, and improved was the garden fence, which is actually the very first fence that I ever built. And I don't mean that in like ever built here. I meant like this is the very first fence me as a person ever constructed. This is where I learned how and taught myself how to build fences. So that's what, six years ago? Or five years ago? Five or six years ago? I can't remember. I think it may be six years ago. But anyways, it's, it's uh, been overdue for repairs. Um, also improvements because we're doing things different this time around to try and help keep annoyances out of the garden so we're actually doing a woven wire and the kind of fabric we're using and i say fabric because that's what you call fencing material it's the fencing fabric is a red brand uh horse fence it's five foot tall and the squares on it so the what the the weave is a two inch wide by four inch tall now here's the difference between those what we've done everywhere else on the farm is called a goat and sheep uh, woven fence and that's what's right here see so this is a four by four so it's four and four squares all right and this is what red brand calls their goat and sheep fence now we've got that running pretty much everywhere else on the property but we're going with the horse fence on the garden because of the height because it's five foot tall uh, what i've learned in this process is that chickens, even after they get their feathers cut, can still jump without even needing to use flight. They can almost jump and just get enough lift with their cut feathers to get over that four foot tall uh, welded wire fence. So we're going five foot tall, which I think will be enough to keep the chickens from jumping over. And another big benefit is that the goats will not be able to break down the fence by pushing their bodies up against it. See on the back side of the garden back there where the goats are uh, on the other side of the garden where the woods are, the goats have free reign where they come and they push up against that fence on the garden. And honestly, they've broken down large chunks of it, which is why we were this summer constantly chasing uh, the Nigerian dwarf uh, kids before they went to their new home. And honestly, we've had the bucks get in there a couple of times because they have started to shred almost that welded wire fence. The woven wire will keep all the goats out. It'll keep the chickens out. Uh, the size of the holes with a two by four will keep any low crawling critters out so no rabbits are getting in. Um, the only things that will be able to get over it are things that can climb, but honestly, fences don't usually keep that kind of stuff out anyways. Where we're at on the fence is we've deconstructed everything on <coughs> the house side of the, of the garden. The goats are on that side. There's the pavilion. There's the window greenhouse. So this is the houses behind me. So everything on the house side, we've taken down, taken the posts out. What's up, Toby? That's a big post, huh? Yeah, right you got it? You I trying to get that. a hold of it? There's this fish, and it was like, it was pulling harder on this than I'm pushing. Oh, when you were pulling it in? Yeah, like, I couldn't even pull it in. Like, there's this huge rock. There's this huge rock, and it kept swimming around. Mm -hmm. It, like, so I got it, and it was huge, and it swam around it, the rock. And How'd you get the fish in? I didn't. Like, it, it swam around it a walk in like a second, and then it swam off, flew to current as fast as it like, like it just went very fast, uh -huh. flew to current, and then and it was gone. It, yeah, and then it was gone. Okay, because man, 
I'm sorry you missed out on that fish. I know. But you got a lot of big ones that day. Oh yeah, I got Big Boy Bob. Big Gary, Boy Bob. Gary. And uh, what was the last one? I don't remember. They're your fish. I forgot the last one. All right, let's get back to the fence. Yeah. That's a good story. We're replacing our old H brace system uh, that I put in. So you can see this is what's part of the old fence. So it's got two four by fours and then a four by four running between it and I've got tension wire holding it all together. Um, honestly, I'm not gonna do that anymore. What we are gonna do is basically what I've done on other parts of the property where like on that gate right there, it's essentially just a post with an angled brace going the direction that tensioning the fence to. Any of the fences that I've built in the last three years have gone, I've done that and honestly they're sturdier they're less likely to break they require less maintenance um, i just it's easier to put up so we're just going to be putting these five by fives in the corners using a five by five brace going each direction that the fence is stretching um, and then obviously t posts in between i've gotten pretty efficient at building fences i should have this done probably by the end of this week um, we've already gotten a lot of the deconstruction part done and some of the holes in it should go pretty fast See all this little, all this mud right here? Yeah, right in that area is where all the, uh, is where the septic tank is. So it's still soft because out here when you dig um, and put soil back, it takes honestly a year, sometimes longer for it to recompact before it becomes solid. It's like, there's just so much water. There's such a high water table out here. Um, we're still waiting for the barn. Um, I'm assuming that it probably has something to do with uh, COVID issues or why it's delayed. Um, I put a call in with the company to try and get a direct answer of like what's going on, but I haven't heard back yet. So we're still waiting on the barn. Once that actually gets here, I'll be putting a lot of uh, focus into getting it set up with stalls before kidding season. Um, we're gonna build a feed room. <laughs> we're gonna build a feed room and some other stuff. So. I'm kind of just been waiting on that. I, I do want, I am excited to get started on getting that done, but I can't do anything until they deliver the building. These guys are doing pretty well out here. They're doing exactly what Jessica hoped they would. They're also staying inside their fence, which the, you know, the pigs did not do. Don't tell the other flock, but I think this is my favorite flock of chickens we have. Same. Because honestly, it's made up of all the ones that were escaping, but it, as it turns out, a lot of the ones that are escaping were some of my favorite breeds, like the blue layers and the fluffy legs and the uh, buff Orpington rooster. And I mean, look at that. Just look at that fluffy butt right there. Oh, yeah. Like, they're just some of my favorite chickens. I know you're not supposed to play favorites, but they're, they're my favorite. Just like I said, just don't tell the other coop and we won't have any issues. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the last video you know, Jessica showed me being like really dramatic about uh, the pigs because we had just finished getting uh, the first two litters uh, back into a spot where they wouldn't run free and eat stuff that we planted like garlic and onions. And then it turns out that they, Doris's kids were nursing off of Fanny and Clem, which was a bad thing because we needed Fanny and Clem to get a break. That's why we separated them from their babies. Anyways, it was a pretty simple fix. I uh, just convinced Fanny and Clem to follow me into the other pig yard, leaving Doris and her three babies in this pig yard. That compost pile. Oh, how have we had that? Does it smell good? Oh, no. Ah. Look how big it is. That's from all of the hay and the other stuff we've cleaned out from the barns. Why are y'all covering your noses up? That's what we're gonna grow your food in. Wait, what? That's it. You're serious? Yeah, we're gonna turn that into soil and we're gonna grow food in it. Go poop. Yeah, so I mean, all the food that we grow is, is we fertilize it with manure. Dude, <coughs> but they come off branches, not from the soil. That's true. There's logs in there. Yeah, it'll be okay. Here is so Fanny and Clem. And honestly, they already look uh, heavier because they're not sharing and getting nursed off of, and they're getting fed a lot more food. See, this is where the Lamanches were. That's where the, the feeder pigs are. So they're just hanging out where the Lamanches were hanging out. I'm gonna keep them here until one, they put on enough weight that I feel like they're looking healthy. And two, 
uh, Doris's kids are gone. All right, guys. Hey, I wanted to go show them the uh, stuff I did in the tool trailer. Y'all want to go with me? And we'll um, talk about the tool trailer. I don't trailer. know what you did with the toy trailer. Well, let's go look at it. Okay. Have not made just a whole lot of progress because of holidays and different other things that were higher priority is the tool trailer. Um, we finally made some progress and honestly, as soon as we're done knocking the fence out, I'm going to go ahead and get this all the way squared away. I would like to show you what we've done so far because I think it's pretty cool. Thumbs up? Yes. All right, cool. You do thumbs up. All right, thumbs up. Thumbs Nux. bump. Thumbs bump. All right, thumbs. cool. All right, let's get this thing open. Yeah. Alright, watch out. Ooh, that's scary. That is very scary. Yeah. Oh! This is getting kind of dark. Let's grab the extension cord and plug this in so everyone can see inside. Ooh. Let's see. Well, there's the cord, but it's not plugged in anymore. Got the extension cord. Alright. First thing I did, I wanted to have some power in here so we could put some lights and some other things. So I did this conduit system and I got a replacement skill saw cord. So you can go to Home Depot and they'll have this. So like if you were cutting with your skill saw and you cut your cord and you needed to replace it, you could buy this replacement. But I didn't use it for that. I essentially wired it in to this junction box. So now, Okay. So now when I plug that in, I've actually got lights running to a switch. Can I do one? Um, sure. Try it out. There you go. Now, look. Now you got light. All right. No, sure. Everyone's got to try. Yeah. Don't want anyone left out from trying. Okay. That's I did it too fast the first time. You did it too fast. Okay. Oh my God. Also ran it to. A couple of outlets that I'm actually going to run all of my battery chargers off of. I'm not setting this up to like run like big tools like the miter saw or the table saw off of. I just wanted it for the charging of like my 20 volt stuff. Eventually I think what I'd like to do is get like a battery system where I can trickle charge batteries. That way if I ever get to a spot where I don't have an outlet to plug the trailer up to, I can still run the lights and stuff off of a battery. Um, but uh, I'm not there yet. We also uh, refinished these old cabinets, which these cabinets actually came from our house before this house. And we're uh, gonna throw them out. And I was like, you know, I might use them. And it's essentially just a three drawer system or four drawer system with a small drawer on top and we're refinishing them to kind of match. So that's gonna be like where we hang up all the drills and uh, like the saws and stuff. I think the system that I'm going to set up, the hanging handles have like a rubber coating on them and they're angled up. So that should keep things from bouncing around too much while we're in transit. If it doesn't work, I'll come up with some system of, of strapping the tools in. But then I'm gonna use like the drawers for all of my tape measures and knives pencils, you know, small stuff like that. And then all the big stuff's gonna go at the front of the trailer. Um, my miter saw is gonna secure up here, the table saw, all that. And then we're gonna put uh, shelving on this other wall to hold nails and screws and all that. So I'm gonna try and consolidate most of our tools into this one trailer. I don't know that I'll be able to fit everything, but um, I'm gonna try. So this is what I've been working on. I'm gonna keep working on this and me and Ben Turner are gonna keep working on the fence. Um, and I'll try and keep you guys updated. As soon as we get this squared away, I will be starting on the mill project and that will probably be my focus for um, the rest of the year. I mean, that's gonna be one of the things that I'm consistently doing just with everything that's gone on up to this point. Uh, different things breaking, holidays, all that. I haven't had time to, to get into it. And also I've been waiting on the barn because when I set the mill up, I don't want the goats to be able to climb on it and poop on it and different things. And so I need, I need to be able to uh, run a, a piece of fence sectioning them away from where I'm putting the mill. But the issue with that is that where the mill's going is where the old barns are. 
and so I can't section them off until we get the new barn that I can tear down the old barns. You see there's a process in here. So we're really pushing to find out where the barn's at, get it installed, get the goats sectioned away from where the mill's going, and then it's gonna be build a mill. All right guys, one more thing and then we'll sign off. Uh, ben actually was adamant about how he wanted a toolkit for Christmas. And so we uh, made that one of his presents and he's super excited about it and he wants to show you guys what he got. All right. You want to put it up here? Yeah, right here. Okay. All right. All right, how do you open it? Okay. Oh, wow. What you got in there? Oh, um, what is this? I want to... That is a level, torpedo level. Okay. Okay. And Obviously, we're still learning what it is. This is a big Home Depot pencil. Home Depot pencil. Yeah. yeah. I have lots of pencils. And there's a screwdriver. And another screwdriver. Okay, you got lots of screwdrivers. Okay, you got some pliers in here. All right, cool. All right, let's lift that off. So, what is it on? All right, what you got in there? So, the first thing I gotta show them is You need this. help? Okay, get it out. Okay. All right, got it? All right. So, this. What's this? A drill. That's a drill? Your own drill? Mm-hmm. So, but you can know that you things, got. Is there, is there things where you put it in? Yeah, there's bits and stuff. We'll get some bits to put in there. Tomorrow. Probably. So, you can learn how to use a drill. Okay. This is That's the charger. Charger and, and the extra battery. And some batteries. What else you got in there? And a charger. A charger for the charger. <laughs> All right, what else? You got some nails. And some screws. Screws. A hammer. A hammer. A tape measure. A tape measure. And um. It's a carpenter square. A carpenter square. And, and what's that? Two clamps. Two clamps. Wow. So you're like ready to build some stuff. Well, just me and the crew doing stuff, talking about what we've been up to, hanging out. Crudes. The crudes, no, you're just the crew. Not the crudes. You're not the crudes. We're not caving. All right, you guys ready to sign off and go get some food? Yeah. yeah. All right, what do we say? Uh, we bless we you love, until, we bless bless you until, until next time. time. That's pretty good. We yeah. bless you guys until next time.